Hi everyone, I hope all is well. If you are new, welcome to my page. Uh, if you are coming back, welcome back and thank you so much for your support. My name is Ashanti and welcome to Uniquely Ashanti's Corner. I am finally, finally back after one whole year away. This is the longest that I have ever been away from YouTube. I think the longest I've ever been away from YouTube is probably about five or seven months, something like that. But a year? Yeah, this is definitely a new one. <laughs> longest I've ever been away. And I did not plan on uh, staying away for this long. To be honest with you, um, before I got back into my regular videos, I wanted to just share a little bit of an update of why I took a break in the first place. I felt a pressing on my heart. I feel like God is leading me to talk about this, so that's why I'm here today. So in order to address this, I actually have to go back about two or three years. Um, there was an online non-denominational Bible correspondence course that I came across that I was considering doing, but I never acted on it. But when my father mentioned it to me, I took it as a sign that I need to start it. So in the beginning, it was good. Uh, it referenced the King James Version. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I referenced the King James Version of the Bible. I don't deal with the other translations. Um, I was paired with a mentor and I was completing the lessons on a daily basis, which is good. Um, I was doing this in addition to uh, my regular Bible readings and journaling, but then I noticed the lessons were starting to reference other Bible translations and when I completed the questionnaire for uh, each lesson, I noticed that it often marked my answers as wrong uh, because it was going based off of these other translations. Uh, since I only use uh, the King James Version, I told my father about it and he suggested that I should get in contact with my mentor, which I did. And just to paraphrase what a message he sent to me. He basically told me that I was constricting myself from fully understanding God's word by just staying with one translation. I needed to expose myself to all different translations in order to understand God's word. And this response did not sit right with me. And when I talked to my father again, he said that it was up to me of what I wanted to do. I could continue to uh, do the lessons while still referencing to my Bible, the King James Version Bible, and it just uh, ignored the platform's grading system, or I could just move on. And I thought about it for a few days, and I just kept thinking about that mentor's uh, response. So. I just stopped doing the lessons and decided to try and find uh, some other King James Version only correspondence courses. And during my search, I mostly came across lessons that pulled from many uh, translations. And one course that seemed to be KJV focused, the website itself didn't exactly look secure. It actually looked kind of sketchy. So I just got off of it and continued my search. During this time, um, I was also trying to figure out where I was going career-wise um, and trying to find internships or beginner-friendly jobs that I could start. I was putting pressure on myself uh, to find something, and one of my relatives was constantly, constantly putting pressure on me too. It was hard for me to find a good balance of researching Bible correspondence courses and finding work. And without intending to do so, I put more emphasis on 
find me work. I shouldn't have done that. I know, but I did. And several months passed, and one day I realized something. I I was brainstorming some uh, video topics for my YouTube channel, and I was only coming up with ideas for my Dose of Vitamin P series. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that Dose of Vitamin P is basically my version of a thought of the day type of video, you know, Dose of uh, Vitamin Positivity. Uh, I wasn't writing down any ideas or topics from a Christian perspective. And I was like, what's going on here? Why am I not being led to do godly center videos like I normally am. What's going on here? And as I thought about it, I realized that when I stopped my Bible correspondence courses uh, search, I unintentionally stopped journaling like I was doing. And I wasn't reading my Bible regularly. This was a result of me putting more emphasis on finding work and I created that distance between me and God. That's when I knew that it was time for me to take a break from YouTube. I didn't want to create videos just because, and I'm still like that, I don't want to just create videos just because, because, because I wanted to be led to create content. And to be completely honest, I wasn't even going to announce that uh, I was going to depart from here for a little while because my page was already pretty quiet and I don't know, I didn't think anybody really cared. Uh, well, maybe not really cared. I guess I mean that uh, I didn't think anybody would just be asking, where are you? Where are the videos? Because you guys always respect that, you know, I have a busy life sometimes. Uh, sometimes I get uh, a little distracted. And so I may not be able to create content. And I appreciate that. I thank you guys for that. So that's why I didn't really say anything because I didn't really think anybody was really inquiring or anything. You know, whenever I announced a hiatus in the past, it was always quiet on my page already. So I always felt like that I was just drawing unnecessary attention to myself, like basically being like, hey, guys, hey, I'm taking a break. Come say bye to me. It just, I don't know, it just, it felt weird. <laughs> I just, every time I would do those videos, I always felt awkward. I felt like I was forcing uh, people to pay attention to me and that's not my that wasn't my intention I was just letting y'all know that hey if it takes a while for me to respond I'm taking a break that's why but anyway <laughs> anyway um, this time I was just going to quietly slip away just slip away and come back whenever that's what the plan was but when someone reached out to me um, to inquire where I was, that's when I knew that I needed to let everyone know what was going on. And that's when you guys saw me do that, uh, what's it called? The community post that you guys saw where I basically told you guys that I just needed to take a break to focus on my relationship with God. And I asked you guys to keep me in your prayers. And I wish that I could tell you that after I made that announcement, I went hard to fix my relationship with God, strengthened my habits, and was back on track. But that is not the case. I still struggled with finding a healthy balance for a while. I also allowed myself to get distracted a lot. As I mentioned before, my relative often made things challenging for me and was constantly being negative. And when I got frustrated with my relative, I would just go off to myself and listen to songs from my childhood to calm down. Nothing vulgar or anything, just childhood songs that uh, 
came from shows, TV shows that I used to watch when I was uh, younger. And I did this because it allowed my mind to just escape to a time where I didn't have to deal with the challenges that I was currently being faced with. But this wasn't healthy for me because I was relying on myself rather than relying on God. That's what I should have been doing. I should have been relying on him to help me, not these childhood songs. And this is something we even see in Proverbs uh, 3, verses 5 through 6. This is familiar to a lot of you. And it, it says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thine own understanding and always acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths, right? That's very popular. We all are familiar with that. This, this habit of uh, listening to childhood songs became toxic and it didn't really help. When the songs were over, guess what? The issues were still there and I was still struggling with handling my emotions. And in addition to this, I was faced with spiritual warfare physically and emotionally. Well, not physically and emotionally. Well, yeah, emotionally, but physically and mentally. I'm sorry, guys. If you guys notice that I'm a little bit awkward in this video, I apologize. I'm trying to get back used to being in front of this camera. It feels a little weird after one year. So please excuse any awkwardness in this video. I got to get back into it. Okay, please bear with me. So anyway, physically and mentally. In the physical sense, it involved encounters with my relative and my body being attacked. While my relative says that she's Christian, she often dabbles into, um, into other things like horoscopes and things originating from new age religion. And she tries to get me involved in it, which I always decline. I have no interest whatsoever in anything that is inspired by something that is against God. My relative believes that you can be Christian and still explore other areas without it affecting you, which is far from the truth. If anybody tells you that, they are liars. That is nothing but a lie. Get that out of your head if you believe that. Perfect example, one time my relative and my father were arguing about something and just out of nowhere, out of nowhere, my relative roared her words at him. And in all the years that I have been around this relative, I have never, ever, ever heard a roar in her voice. It honestly sounded like something just took over. Something just took over her in that moment. And I'm certain that was a result of all of this stuff that my relative was involved in, all these ungodly elements and trying to justify it, I immediately said a prayer and rebuked whatever it was, whatever it was that was trying to take hold of her. And I am very grateful that I have not heard that roar again. And I just pray that it does not happen again. I just continue to keep this relative in my prayers because she really does not understand how her actions are dangerous to her spiritual walk. This relative definitely has made my spiritual walk challenging because she always wants things done her way and she finds fault in the things that I do, which in turn makes me upset. So that's really been hard for me. As for my body, the enemy was really trying to keep me from growing in my relationship with God and reading the Bible. Anytime I started reading, my mind started to wander and I just, I couldn't focus. And when that happened, I would start reading the Bible out loud. But when I did that, that's when I just started yawning, which is also distracting. When it first started, I just thought that I was tired. 
uh, from constantly researching online, you know, all these different jobs and internships. I thought that's, that's all that was. And sometimes, I will admit, I put the Bible away since I couldn't focus well. I was just thinking, okay, I can't really focus. I can't even read the words. I might as well just put this away for now until I can focus. And after I started getting more rest, I realized that I was still yawning. I was still unfocused and feeling a, a sense of tiredness. This was the enemy attacking me. And when I realized it, that's when I kept praying and I kept reading. As for dealing with spiritual warfare in the mental sense, the enemy would make me think that I was seeing things that weren't actually there. And this was always happening to me at night. I would be sound asleep and then just all of a sudden, I would just wake up. And when I would look around my room, I would spot a spider or some other type of bug. And I was thinking that this was real. I would get up out of bed, turn the light on, and it was gone that quick. And I would call my father to come and get it, but the bugs were not there. We were just waiting and waiting and waiting until my father would just say, look, if you see something, just let me know because I'm going back to bed. And... Of course, this made me paranoid and interfere with my sleep because I don't know about you all, but if I know that there is something in my room is hiding somewhere and I don't know where it is, then I cannot go to sleep. I cannot sleep. I cannot rest until I know that it's out of my room. Anyway, I did not realize that this was a mental thing until I saw something out of the ordinary. One night when I woke up, I looked at the ceiling and there was a huge black spider. It was bigger than me. Where I live, we don't get, uh, we don't get spiders of that size. I know that there are other areas I can't Think of the areas off the top of my head, but I know that there are areas that uh, there are spiders that are that big, but that is not something that you see in my area ever. And anyway, while I'm not an expert when it comes to how spiders and bugs move, this spider's movement was bizarre. The uh, six of his legs were just like laying flat on the ceiling while the other two legs were like moving in a pinching much motion like this. It was just moving like this. And it was almost like it was taunting me like as a way of saying, I see you, I see you. And I just freaked out. I did. I freaked out when I saw it. Uh, I went to turn the light on and it was gone. A few weeks later, I then started to see roaches, regular sized ones, and they always disappeared every time that I turned the light on. And one night, I woke up to see one crawling above my closet. And I was about to turn the light on, but a voice in my head told me to just, just watch it, just stay in the bed which was really hard for me, but I, I stayed. And it continued to crawl for a few seconds, and then it just vanished. It didn't fly off. It didn't fall off. It just vanished before my eyes. And coincidentally, this was happening around the time that uh, we usually get unwanted pests in the house due to the change in the weather. But God revealed to me that that was not the case. One day, I went on to YouTube to check if I had any comments to respond to, and in my video recommendations, there was a video from a young woman who was also dealing with spiritual warfare. She said that she saw spiders as she was trying to strengthen her relationship with God, and she knew that they were demons trying to instill fear and confusion in her mind, which made her lean on God even more. 
And the amazing thing about it is that I wasn't even researching anything. It didn't even come to my mind that this was spiritual warfare. So I know that that was nothing but God that brought that video to my attention. It's amazing how God brings the things to us that we don't even know that we need. So whenever that happened again, I just prayed and asked God to remove these demons that were attacking me. This continued to happen on and off for a while, and I knew that it was a result of facing distractions and leaning on my own understanding, which is wrong, and it had to do with the enemy trying to keep me away from God. If I'm too tired, then it would be hard to focus on the Bible. And one day, I just finally said, okay, I got to work on my relationship with God. This is just getting out of hand. I need to do something. So I started researching again. I, I couldn't find anything which was discouraging. And then I thought about a church that my parents used to attend. They stopped going to this particular church due to the fact that we just live a distance from that church now. There was nothing wrong with it. It's just we live a distance from it now. Um, I came across their website and found out that they have a Bible study. I got in touch with one of the pastors who helped me to connect to two women from the church. We were then able to start a Bible study lessons bi-weekly. I decided to start from the Old Testament just to refresh myself on what I read. And um, yeah, unfortunately, one of the women reads from the ESV and NLT translations. The other woman, she reads from the New King James Version. Like I said before, it is very, very, very hard to find someone who just reads from the King James Version only. So many people come up with various reasons why one should not read it. So whenever the women refer to different translations, I just basically ignored it. I always ignored it and I just continued to read from my Bible. And the Bible studies did help me to get back on track, get back into the habit of reading the Bible regularly and refreshing myself on books that I've read before. And then the uh, questionnaire that I usually have to go through for uh, the books or not the books, the, uh, the chapters that I'm currently reading from, that's really been helping me as well. But the enemy kept trying to attack. I struggled with feeling tired as I was reading the Bible and completing the questions for my weekly Bible study. And one night, it got really intense. I was working on some study questions for an upcoming Bible study that I had, and then my stomach started to hurt. And I was going to ignore it at first because I was just thinking that it was something that I must have ate earlier, and I didn't really give it much thought. But then the pain started to intensify, and I started to feel really drowsy all of a sudden. And before I started, I was feeling completely fine. I was fine. I wasn't feeling sick or anything. I wasn't even feeling tired. So I know that this was the enemy attacking me. I started praying and asking God to lift this feeling off of me so I could continue my study, which he did. And I was determined. I was determined to finish what I was doing, even if it meant that I had to stay up until like two, three, four o'clock in the morning. I was like, I don't care. I'm going to finish this. I mean, I'm not going to let the enemy get in the way of me doing this. The enemy also attacked me on and off again, making me think that I was seeing roaches. In fact, one night when I woke up, I heard the song, Put On A Happy Face which was very strange. That's something that's never happened to me before. I never heard any type of music before when something like this happened. And when I looked up at the ceiling, I remember I saw a cluster of roaches with a green hue around them. It was like a glow in the dark type of thing. And the amazing thing is that I wasn't even phased by it. I stayed in my bed and I just prayed and told that demon to get out in Jesus' name and it stopped. 
That's nothing but God that gave me that strength to stay in the bed and not even be phased by it. The Bible study also helped me to be mindful of what I was feeding my spirit. Instead of going to childhood music, I would try to put on Christian or gospel music so I could depend on God for my strength. I have also been attending morning church online with my family each week. And recently I've been tuning into the evening sermons that the church does to continue growing in my walk. I've also started journaling again uh, during my alone time reading my Bible. I'm slowly getting back on track. So that's a good thing. I'm definitely in a better place than I was before. So I thank you. I thank you, all of you, for your prayers and your words of encouragement when I was away. If you could please continue to keep me in your prayers, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. And I just want to say, <clears throat> excuse me, I just want to say that if any of you, any of you are going through a similar experience or have gone through this, just know that you are not alone. Walking in Christ is not easy and it's easy to get distracted. Don't ever feel like that you are just too far gone to get back on track. Don't allow anyone or anything to deter you from Jesus Christ. If you're dealing with spiritual warfare, stay in the word, stay in prayer, and continue to rebuke the demonic attacks. You are an overcomer through Christ. Remember that. Keep seeking him for your strength and your guidance. The enemy fears Christians because he knows what he's up against. The enemy hates to see us draw closer to God because he no longer has control over us. He has lost control. Now he's nervous. He is nothing but a coward. And to show that he's a, that he's a coward, you see how he was attacking me at night? That is nothing but a coward. Demons tremble at Jesus' name, which is why we must call that name any time that we are attacked. We have to keep fighting every single day. It is hard to do it, but we cannot give up. The enemy only has control if we allow him to have it. That's the only way he's going to have control is when you put up your hands and you say, I give up. Do not give up. That's what he wants you to do. Don't do it. You are stronger than you think. You can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. And as I am saying this to you, as I'm saying it to all of you right now, I, I am speaking to myself. I am. I'm not perfect. And I'm still fighting this fight. This isn't a one-time thing that we should be doing. Like the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 11, we got to put on the full armor of God. This isn't just a one-time thing where we just do it whenever we feel like it. This is something that you have to make a habit of every single day, all of us, including me. We got to keep fighting, keep fighting, keep praying. You got this. God is with you every step of the way. Even if it feels like that he is not there, he is there. Continue to trust him. Continue to love him. Continue to put your faith and trust in him always. Do not put your faith and trust in man or materialistic things in this world. Put it in the one that created you and loves you dearly. And with that, I am going to bring this video to a close. Again, sorry if there were moments where I was awkward in this video. Please forgive me. I'm going to try and get better with that. I'm still trying to get used to being in front of the camera. Thank you so much for tuning in and for your continued support. I truly appreciate each and every single one of you. Feel free to leave your comments down below. I would love to interact with you here, especially since it's been a year. <laughs> I would love to hear from you. You can drop a comment, say hi. I would love to hear from you. 
As I always say, please refrain from profane language, even if it's an abbreviation. And please be respectful. God bless each and every single one of you, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.